Hey y'all, welcome, welcome back to another doll haul. I haven't done one of these in a while, like I just haven't had cause to do one in a while, but today I do. I've got five dolls off to the side here. You might be able to see the tips of some of their boxes already that I wanted to unbox and share with you guys. And they're not dolls that are like new enough for me to feel like I need to make like a whole unboxing and review type video, but I still want to share them with y'all. And so instead we are doing a little doll haul today. So I've got a couple of rainbow high dolls and then the others are going to be Barbie. So let's go ahead and start off with the rainbow high dolls, which are, I mean, one of them shadow high. I have costume ball dolls to take a look at because Finally, in my area, the costume ball dolls went on clearance at my Walmart for like $11 a piece. And at that point, I was finally like, okay, yeah, now I can actually get some of the others. I had bought Demi and then I bought, what's her name? Eliza. I couldn't think of her name for a second. Right when they came out, because those two, I really, really loved. And even though I didn't think they were worth the price, I didn't want to risk not getting them. But there are two others that I was like, technically there were three others that I would would have like considered buying at a cheaper price point, but my Walmart only had two out of those. Um, but yeah, so I figured since now they've gone on clearance, I would actually go ahead and pick them up. So the first one, as you can clearly see here, is Lola. I am very excited to be able to have her. I'm not like the most thrilled with her outfit. We'll obviously like get into that, but I think that her base doll is really pretty and I love her shoes and her fishnet socks. So like, I felt like for $11, she was worth it. Let me go ahead and pop her open. I still have my receipt in there. Solid. <laughs> but then you can see the little like info about her, the very tiny info about her on the side. And then the actual doll here. She's cute. Like I'm not trying to say that she isn't cute. She just definitely wasn't a doll that I would have paid the original price point of $40 for. But I'm really happy I was able to grab her for $11 because I feel like I'm going to redress her and really, really love her. So that is the first rainbow or shadow high doll to get through. And then the second one is the same sort of story, but we have Robin. And I'm so excited for her because she was my third favorite. Like I did think she was so cute. The other one that I would have gotten was Bella, but my store was out of Bella and you know, that's fine. I'm not going to die if I don't have her, but I really did like Robin's design. She had only ever had the pajama doll before that. And I didn't like the pajama doll. Cause like in general, I just don't like pajama dolls, but I do like her color story. I think this particular shade of blue is extremely striking and really beautiful. And I think she's a well-designed like base doll. I just didn't want the pajama doll. So when she came out as like a costume ball doll, I was really excited for her except for the price point. So again, really, really excited to be able to grab her for a better price point. And she's spider themed and just, I'm already so eager to get into her. So those are the two Rainbow and Shadow High dolls that we have to look at and then getting into the Barbies. So two of them are from the same line, which is the Great Eras collection. All of my boxes today almost have like this opening feature. I'm not sure why that's the theme of today's video, but here we are. I have already, I think just one from this collection where I have the medieval one and I love her. I think she's so fun and just very different. And like, I love having her in my collection a lot. So I picked up the Grecian goddess first off. I have actually seen this doll a couple of times in person at different like secondhand places. And I just had never pulled the trigger and finally bought her, but you might be able to see the price tag still up here. She was $6. And I was like, there's no way for $6 I'm going to turn this opportunity down, right? <laughs> so I did go ahead and pick her up. On the inside panel here, we've got a, a lot more information than on the uh, Rainbow High ones. And it's just talking a little bit about the time period that she comes from. And then of course, you can see the actual doll. I'm obviously going to be unboxing her so that we'll be able to actually get a close up look at her and everything. But she's very striking as well. So I'm really, really excited to have her and I'm excited to be able to pop into her and again, $6. Like, that's just such a steal. I couldn't I couldn't turn her down. <laughs> then the other one from the Great Eras collection, $10, also an absolute steal to me, is the Elizabethan Queen doll. This one's really funny because I think I saw I saw the doll that you haven't seen yet first and I picked her up first when I was like at this particular store and then I think I saw the Grecian goddess doll and this was like the last one that I saw that I was kind of interested in and I had sent a picture of her to my husband to be like hey what do you think like I'm a little bit on the fence about her do you think I should get her and he had some choice words <laughs> I got her anyway obviously but so you can see there is all of the information she is the Elizabethan queen so it's about the Elizabethan time period
And then this is the doll. And I think there's a lot to love about her. I think this dress is absolutely magnificent. Like she's got a lot of detail and I think that there's a lot of good. But um, to use Tony's words, she has a yee yee ass hairstyle, <laughs> which like, <laughs> I don't, I don't know like that much about um, Elizabethan hair or like hair of different time periods in general. I, I think it's not inaccurate necessarily. I think it just looks kind of interesting on the doll scale and like the way that it's done. So I might try to zhuzh that up a little bit. I just thought that was really funny because he didn't even tell me whether or not I should get the doll. He was just like, I hate the hair a lot. But I bought her regardless because I thought the rest of her was really, really cool. And like, I don't think the hair is atrocious. I don't know. I just thought that was like a funny little tidbit that I wanted to include. So I have that one. Sorry, I went off on a tangent there that didn't matter at all. But like, I feel like these doll hauls tend to be kind of more casual style videos. Like they're not as, I mean, all my videos are pretty casual. Like I'm not a uh, very professional human being. <laughs> but like if I'm doing a proper unboxing and a review, I want to show you guys like all of the points that might make you want to or not want to buy a doll. Whereas with these, it's like these are older dolls for the most part. I'm just kind of chit chat. I'm just having fun. Anyway, the last one that I have is a Dolls of the World doll, and this is the Northwest Coast Native American Barbie. If you have been around for a while on the channel, you'll know that I am so beyond obsessed with the Dolls of the World Princess Edition dolls specifically. Those are just like top tier, genuinely one of my favorite lines of all time. I cannot express adequately how much I love that line. But the other like generalized Dolls of the World dolls are also really fun and really amazing. And one of my favorite parts about it is that on the back, they tell you like information about the doll and like the culture that she comes from, which I just absolutely adore. Can you tell that I like dolls that have a little bit of like education to them? There's a theme going on here, but I'll put pictures in while I'm editing also of like all the snippets so you can pause to read the information if you want. But that's just a huge selling point for me with these dolls. It's part of why I love them so much. All of the Dolls of the World dolls that I've gotten, I keep the backs of, like I cut the box apart and I keep the back so that I can someday put it up in like a big fancy display with them. Because I just am so absolutely enamored by that. And this one specifically, I really appreciate because Barbie has had several different Native American dolls throughout her run. And some are significantly better than others. A lot of them, unfortunately, are kind of just an amalgamation of Native American stereotypes. And like, that's not super. But I, from what I've heard from like other Native people speaking on these dolls in like online videos and stuff, I have heard that this one is one of the better representations of one, specifically because she is um, from the Clinkit people. I believe I'm saying that correctly. Obviously, if you like read what I'll end up putting up here, you can see that. So she's not based off of just like general, oh, Native American, and it's not supposed to be like a mockery. She is based off of a specific group of people, and she's supposed to be representative of their specific customs, which I think is really beautiful. And I think that that's a nice thing to do to like celebrate it instead of just generalizing Native American peoples in general. So I hope that makes sense. But I like felt comfortable getting her because some of the Native American Barbies, I would not buy because I feel like they do harm. I hope that that makes sense. Like I just feel like their representation is inherently harmful. And I would feel weird having them in my collection. But I don't feel this way about her. I think she's a really, really beautiful doll. And I like the fact that she has better like deeper representation if that makes sense so i was thrilled to find her too thrilled to have her here and i'm gonna be thrilled to open her up with y'all today that was a lot to get through sorry i feel like i've been talking a lot for the intro i usually try to keep my intro short and sweet but like i don't know i guess i'm just feeling chatty today so y'all will probably have to put up with that while i like do the actual unboxing so sorry in advance if that's not really what you're here for um but yeah i'm gonna go ahead and unbox all of these off camera and then you know in however long that takes me. I'll reconvene with my typical unboxing setup so we can kind of take a look, cloak, take a cloak, <laughs> take a closer look at the dolls and all of their details and just celebrate some of these older dolls. I know the rainbow and shadow high ones aren't like that old, but especially the Barbies, I think it's really fun to highlight. So yeah, that's what you're going to be doing today. If you do find yourself enjoying, if you could like, comment, and subscribe, all of that stuff is very helpful to me. If you really want to go out of your way to support me, I've got like wish list and PO box in the description down below. But otherwise, let me go ahead and get ready and then I will be right back with you guys. 
Okay, I'm here and I'm finally ready. I know for you guys, it's only been like a couple seconds, but for me, I had to unbox everything and I also ended up having to go to the grocery store before I could finish filming. So it's been a second. I'm a little warm because it's toasty outside today, but I'm excited to finally get to talk about these dolls. So I'm going to go in the same order that I introduced them in in the intro part of this video, which means that we are starting off with Miss Lola Wilde. She does have her uh, shadow high stand, you know, rainbow high shadow high stand. It's been so long since I've unboxed a Rainbow High doll or a Shadow High doll. Like the last one I did was the like reboot Amaya, but I feel like it's been so long. It felt very strange to like unbox her, but strange in a very good way. So I'm going to pop her off here so we can like actually look at her. Also, the stand is crooked, but you know, whatever. The Rainbow High stands were never known for being like the most structurally sound, but the doll is so cute. As I said, like, I, I the, the outfits whatever but look at her face the face alone makes her worth eleven dollars it didn't make her worth forty dollars but it made her worth eleven dollars for me she is so just pretty I love the makeup I love the eyes I love the colors like she is gorgeous she's got her little cat ears which are like a plastic frame and then there's some lace kind of haphazardly sewn on top. It's not the most high quality thing ever, but also I do like appreciate the fact that it is actual lace. So I shouldn't really be complaining. <laughs> uh, she's got her shadow high earrings here, kind of just silver, fairly basic. And she's got her curls, which are so stunning. They're so bouncy and beautiful and lovely. And for once, MGA didn't decide to put a shit ton of gel in there. So they actually feel super soft and super nice which is great because I was worried about how I would get these perfect ringlet curls like how I would redo this hair now I don't have to which I'm super excited about because it's just so so pretty I do love her base doll and I'm really really stoked about this hair I think it's absolutely gorgeous uh looking down to the outfit it is a two-piece set just velcros in the back and then there is a belt here that is a separate piece I think the tweed is like what's kind of throwing me off there's a plastic tie that I I've missed somewhere deep within the fur. I did miss unboxing Rainbow High Dolls just for the sake of I missed unboxing Rainbow High Dolls, but I did not miss all of these friggin' tea ties, man. Anyway, sorry about that. <laughs> I think the tweet is what's throwing me off because it just like doesn't feel like it meshes to me. Um, but she has, oh my God, there's another one on her other hand. Both her hands were tea tied to her skirt, but I couldn't tell because of all the fur on the cuffs. Bruh. I'm just trying to show this off. <laughs> anyway, the belt says shadow on it and it's like painted to kind of look like chains and there is a little dangling piece with the S on there. Uh, the belt is fine. Like, you know, the shadow high and the SH being everywhere can get kind of irritating, but like, I don't really mind it in this case. I think that it works just fine. But yeah, I just, I don't know. Something about the tweed is feeling a little too like preppy for me, but that's okay. I can redress her. <laughs> She's got faux zippers on the front of her shirt and her skirt here. And then not real. Oh, I lied. They are real. They're just like very, very shallow. Shallow little pockets there. It does feel like quality. I'm, it's not necessarily my style, but like the fur is nice. There's more of like a fleecy material on sort of the vest situation and like on the cuffs of the sleeves. It all feels very nice. Like, you know, old school rainbow high quality <laughs> and then the fishnets is what i'm excited about they're little like fishnet socks and these shoes are so cool the triple heel is so interesting you can't really see it on camera because my contrast is like iffy you can kind of tell from that angle but it's like there's teeth on the heel and it's very interesting i really like that just because it's something a little bit strange and a little bit different i am sorry you can't see enough um but then it's also a real laced up shoe, which is just so intricate and lovely. And I love the details. And so like she definitely in her restyle will be keeping this portion. I just need to fix kind of the middle section there. But for $11, I'm so happy to have my hands on her because like her base doll really is just absolutely stunning. And like, I mean, $11 for a doll is a solid, <laughs> that's a solid deal. So I'm really, really glad that my Walmart finally put these on clearance so I could grab her. I hadn't walked in intending to, but it was a very pleasant surprise to be able to walk out with Miss Lola here. So 
Sorry, girly pop, but that means your turn is over. Now it's time to talk about Robin, who I'm also very excited about. She's just so pretty. I love the color of her hair. Like, I mean, her overall color scheme in general so much. It's just so, so nice. So let's go ahead and pop her off the stand as well. And look at her beautiful face. It's kind of hard to see because like front facing her lashes really obscure it. But she does have spider webbing on her makeup. And I just adore it. I love the dramatic makeup looks. I think they're so pretty. And this dark brown lip on her is absolutely gorgeous. It's like kind of a dark version of her nude color. And it's just so, so pretty. It looks so good on her. She's got her edges on there. This hairstyle is everything. Like the eight kind of, what is this like a rope braid? Am I referring to that correctly? I am obsessed. Again, very little gel. Like there's some on the ends, which is unnecessary MGA, but whatever. But for the most part, it's pretty gel free. There are some flyaways, which irritates me to no end when there's a style like this. Cause like the flyaways kind of matter in a style like this, but I'll figure something out with that. I just, I think this is so fun. I love the silhouette that it gives her. She's just so perfect. Uh, the, the tiara is just hanging on literally by a thread, which I feel like they probably could have done something better with how to connect that. Just because, like, I can't cut it. But even when I don't cut it, you can see that it's like not sitting right because of how it's sewn on there. So that's a little weird. Doesn't matter. No, it's like way too late for me to be complaining about this. But also, I'm gonna keep doing it. <laughs> I love her little drop spider earrings. The faint iridescence on the spider's like abdomen and head is so nice. Like I just, I just love it. I am nervous around spiders. Um, I don't love them, but aesthetically, spiders and spider webs, absolutely yes. It is funny because when the doll first came out, I remember I had talked about how I didn't really like this ring here. Like I just don't like the shape so much that it gives the doll and I would have preferred just a two piece or just to do it all as one piece. I still think I would prefer that, but having her in hand, it actually bothers me a lot less than I thought it would. The kind of under pieces of this outfit are, it's like all sewn together. Like it's not actually layers, but the blue is just kind of solid. The main like draw of the dress though, like this spider webbing is so unbelievably beautiful like the super fine fish netting the amazing embroidery of the webs and also the spiders themselves with pearls to accentuate the body and you can definitely see on camera as my light hits it there are little sequins just sewn randomly on there to kind of give it that extra shimmer with the movement i think it is unreal how pretty it looks a lot of the edges are very very rough like on the bottom there it's like hemmed properly a lot of the edges on top are rough and I honestly don't mind it because I think that it looks more spider webby for that like it looks like cobwebby and just beautiful and listen I know that the doll world collectively is pretty sick of <laughs> mermaid style dresses just because we've been seeing them so much and I get it I really truly do but first of all this doll came out a while ago and second of all this is so so stunning like I just I love it. I love this dress so much. Well, two piece. It's a two piece set, but it's so well crafted and so beautiful. I genuinely wish Costume Ball had like been priced better from the get go because I think it was an exemplary line in terms of the quality of these dolls and their outfits. Minus Violet. Sorry, I'm never going to stop hating on that doll. But now I have four. And they're just so pretty. <laughs> uh, she's got like rings and her fingernails and stuff. I think. Lola does too, and I just forgot to mention it. I will say the shoes, we've got more proper string here, which is super cool, and it kind of laces through and looks a little webby. That's fun. The painting is iffy on mine, and I'm not sure. Yeah, you can you can see, I think, on camera. I don't know if the yellowing is like because of an adhesive or because of some of the color on the inside or if it is already because of age, but this is definitely supposed to be like a clear transparent like the heel. But on this like main body of the shoe, it's looking significantly more yellow, which does really bother me. Like I think that it really messes up her look. If there wasn't so much white on her look, 
I don't think it would matter nearly as much, but because there's so much white, I think it's making the yellow look even more intensely yellow by contrast. And it is driving me crazy. So I will probably end up painting the soles white so that like, I just don't have to see that because it's high key irritating me. <laughs> but aside from that, she is an absolutely gorgeous, gorgeous girl. <laughs> I'm I'm really excited about her like Lola is one that I was like okay yeah for $11 I'll buy her for the base doll so I can redress her Robin is one where when they came out I was like if this doll was $25 I would have bought her right off the bat so to have her now like not that I'm not excited about Lola but I am kind of a little extra excited about Robin so that's all for her that's all for Rainbow High in total come on girly pop we gotta move on to Barbie I think I showed you guys the Grecian goddess first. I think that's correct. We're just going to go with it. She does have a fancy stand here that says Grecian goddess on there. And it is just like a saddle stand. So I'm going to slip that out so that we can take a look at the doll. The hairstyle is definitely something. And that's like if you're judging it in modern terms, which I mean, it's not necessarily fair because it's is supposed to be more of a like historically inspired doll. For what she is supposed to be, for her supposed to be like having this Grecian hairstyle, it's not something I would put on my body currently, but I really appreciate the like interestingness of the curls and like the way they're done in the front, just because it's not something you see anymore, but it was something that used to be done in ancient Greece. And so that's just really cool that they like were dedicated enough to do that, especially because I feel like that might be kind of hard to do on doll hair. I'm going to have to wash her because she's old and sticky, uh, especially because her rubber bands have deteriorated and kind of gotten gross in her hair. So that's going to be interesting to try to keep those. But yeah, she's pretty. <laughs> the face is like a particular Barbie face that it's hit or miss for me. Lola just fell off camera. I literally did nothing. Whatever. <laughs> yeah, it, it's kind of hit or miss for me. It's definitely not my favorite Barbie face. I would say it kind of falls into the realm of like ugly cute to me, if that makes sense. But it works for me in this case. She has proper dangly earrings, which is genuinely incredible. And this amazing headpiece, like look at all of the intricacies on here. I don't know how much these dolls originally retailed for. I'd be very curious to find that out. If I'm feeling real energetic, which who knows. I'll look it up while I'm doing the editing and I'll put it on screen here. If it's not on screen, uh, I wasn't feeling energetic and I'm sorry. <laughs> but if any of you guys know if I didn't put it on screen, I would love to learn what these are originally retailed for. Because like, obviously I got it secondhand for very cheap. But like, the the amount of quality in here. Like if Barbie made something like this now, this would be well over $100. Like they charge hundreds of dollars, not hundreds, but they charge like $100 for dolls that are less intricate than this now. So like, I'm happy about that. <laughs> but yeah, the headpiece is so cool. It's got so many different materials and there's actual snaps on it. So it like snaps on and off, which I mean, not to, not to shit on Robin here, but like if we compare to this just being casually tied in and not done well, like it's angled improperly. And then we look at this with the snaps. You can't see because I'm off camera, but I'm like flapping my hands. I'm very excited about this. It's so pretty. The actual dress has fl um, flaps, <laughs> snaps as well. And like, there's just so much. There's like dangly bits for her sleeves and this kind of capelet situation. I'm not sure what the technical term is. I'm very, very sorry. But like, that's just the terminology that I have that I can use right now. It's just so beautiful. All of the gold leaves here are like individually sewn on. You can see because I like moved this one. Are you kidding me? The fabrics are so nice, soft and beautiful. The layers are absolutely exquisite. Like low key, I'm emotional about this and I paid $6 for her. I know I keep saying that, but I'm a really big fan of a good deal. So <laughs> it's just so breathtaking and beautiful. And, uh, Every time I do one of these videos, I feel like I just deepen my love for old Barbies because they really are just something else. She does have sandals for shoes and the material really threw me. I think this is genuinely so funny because I was expecting gold, right? Because like gold would match. And I also just feel like a gold sandal is almost typical for like ancient Grecian or ancient Roman um, dolls or designs, honestly. 
<laughs> that's not what we got. I just think that something about this iridescent material is so funny to me. Because, like, I associate this with, like, angel wings. Or, like, unicorn skin or, like, mermaid. You know, that sort of thing. It's just so funny to me to see on a more historical doll. You can't see it when she's standing, really. So, like, it doesn't bother me. It's honestly just low-key kind of hilarious. But she is so so beautiful like just the layers and everything i i can't get over her i'm so happy i finally like found her and picked her up because like i said i'd seen her a couple of times but she'd been more expensive the couple of times i saw her and i like was waffling about it but getting her unboxed great decision excellent purchase but we still have more so i gotta move on all i can think about is how much doll hair i need to wash now and i'm supposed to be working on a custom doll right now and instead i'm doing this <laughs> Anyway, though, uh, so for the Elizabethan queen, she also has her special unique stand. It's like the same cut. That's not the right word. It's the same sculpt and everything. It's just got a different sticker on it. But here she is. She's definitely a vibe. Like the the hairstyle. It really is something. <laughs> Again, I think it's just not like a modern sensibility thing, but I like that it's historically accurate because I feel like it's more fun to have something like this that like might not be pretty enough that I would wear it currently. Sorry, I was checking her shoes. But I like that it's more accurate, if that makes sense. Like I, I don't need to see my Elizabethan queen having beach waves, right? Like this is solid for her. So I'm here for it. I'm still gonna have to wash it. And again, I have no clue how I'm gonna manage to do that. But we'll figure it out, I guess. <laughs> She's got this <laughs> crown situation that I have to laugh at just because the the construction, it makes sense in terms of like, if you're trying to solve the problem of how am I going to put this on a doll and have it look good, it makes total sense. And frankly, I don't even know if like something like this might have existed in some point in history, but it is fabric and it's like snapped on over her bun. And something about that is just so funny to me, but like it works and it looks fine and I'm here for it. This ruff is the star of the show to me. This is absolutely incredible. There are snaps running along from the ruff down like the body of the dress so that you can undress her. That is just so amazing. The way that the material is like stiff enough and it's folded in this way to have it actually frame her face I'm baffled, I'm befuddled, I'm excited. <laughs> I'm having a great time with this one. She does have a cross necklace with like a pearl strand. And I didn't, that none of that was in frame. I'm getting too excited and I'm not paying attention. She has a cross necklace with a pearl strand. And this part here is the closure. And it's like, it's hard to see because of the angle that it's at. But it's like a keychain closure. Like I've seen it on keychains. I, I know I've seen it on the necklaces too. But the fact that it has a genuine closure to it, instead of like just kind of being there or being painted or molded plastic or anything, like, again, the quality is just so top tier and I'm just so enamored by it and excited by it. And of course, talking about the dress, like the, the thickness of the fabric is so nice. The details are making me lose my mind, honestly, like the puffs at her hips the detail of like the stone being sewn on here, the ribbons that are sewn all over her arms. I'm I'm genuinely speechless when I see Barbies like this. And I just, I'm, I'm getting emotional again, which is fine. I know, but sorry, her shoe slipped off. I keep, I keep going back to the shoes on this one <laughs> off camera or like without you guys knowing, but just knowing that dolls like this exist and that Barbies like this exist. And the fact that she's in my hands, like this is kind of how I feel about the Dolls of the World Princess editions that I referenced earlier. They just evoke such a feeling in me. And I wish to God Barbie would do more stuff like this now, even though I'm sure their prices would be ludicrous. Because I'd probably pay it if it was of this quality. Like, I'm dying for another historical line from Barbie is basically what I'm saying. <laughs> she's got the front panel of her skirt that does match the like bodice of it. And then this is almost quilted. The rest of her skirt, obviously there's these beautiful different patterns in each little diamond 
but it's genuinely almost quilted. Like if you look at the inside, there's a very light, I think this is called batting sewn in there. So it's thick and it's heavy and it's so beautiful. I just love her so much. She probably needs like a petticoat <laughs> to kind of look right from the side, but it's just so gorgeous. And for doll clothing, like the construction is so beautiful. The pattern is so interesting. Like y'all, this doll is just so pretty. Uh, she just has little gold slippers. That's what I've been fumbling with this whole time. It's just little gold slippers. I don't know why. I don't know why they're giving me such a hard time, but yeah, that's there. So that's the Elizabethan queen Barbie. I'm gonna like let her sit there for a second so you can take a look at her. She's just so gorgeous. I miss this quality of Barbie so bad. I love historical like themed dolls. Like I just, I love it so much. It's unreasonable. <sighs> I have to calm down so I can keep going because we have one more doll to get through. But God, she's evoking such a feeling in me and I'm glad I decided to get her despite Anthony insulting her hair because she's making me real happy right now. But yeah, I gotta, gotta pull her off so we can look at the last one. <laughs> this is gonna be such a long video and I'm sorry for making that everyone's problem. Oh God, I lost the shoe. Barbie shoes are just something else. Um, this time the stand is like a saddle stand, but there's no special sticker or anything. So that's that. And here is the Native American from the Northwest Coast Barbie. So beautiful. So beautiful. Uh, I feel like Northwest Coast, depending on where you are, like maybe you wouldn't have thought about it like how I did. Because I was thinking like Washington State, but actually uh, the tribe that she is meant to be from is native to what is now Alaska. So the heavy, heavy clothing makes tons of sense because like, it's kind of cold up in there. <laughs> so let's take a closer look. Her face, the sculpt is just absolutely beautiful. She's just got simple, straight black hair, but the face sculpt is so, so lovely. Her headpiece is made of fabric, which is super pretty. I love that it's got like all the detail, like all the patterning on there. I am a little concerned because clearly the rubber band has not withstood the test of time super, super well. So it's like a little bit stuck onto her hair. And also obviously it is decaying and like it's going to fall apart at some point. So I'm going to have to find some other better way to attach this for her so that she can keep her headpiece. But it's really, really beautiful. Now the cloak, cloak, oh my God, why would I call it that? It's like a shawl. I think there's a proper name. Hold on, let me. So it's this type of robe. I'm probably butchering the pronunciation because I didn't look this one up. I'm so sorry. Uh, Chilka, I am I probably messed that up. It's not because I don't care. I just am kind of dumb sometimes when it comes to pronouncing words. Anyway, though, it is like sewn on the doll onto her like main dress. It was sewn shut also, but I obviously cut those strings so like I can show it to you. But look at the art on it. It is so... I have to like twist her head so you can see the entire back. This is absolutely breathtaking. And it's like a thick, soft, fleecy material. This is so beyond gorgeous to me. It's just genuinely stunning. And the fringe, so beautiful. When you pull it apart, her dress is like a little bit more plain underneath. She's got some decoration up at like the neckline and then a ribbon sewn across the bottom here but it's still that super thick fleecy material which again I think is fine that it's like a thicker material because people living in that area would in a lot of the year need a thicker material to stay warm and so I think it's really cool that Barbie realistically didn't have to use a thicker material like fleece not that I'm saying their clothes are actually made out of fleece I'm just saying like for manufacturing a doll like fleece is a nice thick material to kind of represent that it's meant to be from a colder climate anyway though i don't know why like I, i'm going off on another tangent <laughs> but like they could have just used a normal material right like a little polyester it could have been super thin it could have been like the t-shirt dresses that they are famous for now because this is doll like she doesn't actually have to stay warm but i love the fact that it feels like it's slightly more accurate because it is so thick and like such a warm material. I just, I don't know, something about that really, really tickled me. And then she has fabric boots. So there's ribbon that is sewn like around kind of the ankle. And they do come off very easily. 
But I think that's really cool that she's got like full fabric boots. And it's again, still that same thick fleecy material. I'm just obsessed with her. I feel like the construction is so nice. She's not as opulent, maybe, as like the Elizabethan queen or even the Grecian goddess. But she's opulent in a different way. Like I, I feel like the others are kind of more shiny. She obviously doesn't really have metallic stuff going on. But the patterns on her clothing are so, so beautiful. The fringe is absolutely gorgeous. She's just remarkable, genuinely. <laughs> I love her so much. I love old Barbie so much. Ah, like, I know there are a lot that in various rankings and such I have kind of insulted. And I think that's fair. I think some old Barbies are absolutely hideous. But some of them are just absolute gold mines, And that's how I feel about all of the Barbies from today. But, you know, we're obviously talking specifically about the Northwest Coast Native American Barbie right now. But let me get them all up here so we can conclude the video. Oh, not losing the shoe again. There's something so inherently funny to me about lining up Rainbow High Dolls next to Barbies because like, you already know in your head they have very different proportions, but seeing especially their heads next to each other is absolutely hilarious. They're the rainbow high heads are so much bigger like the proportions are just so different love them both for different reasons but like something about this setup right now is comical to me <laughs> but that's it for today guys that is the doll haul an unnecessarily long one probably i feel like yeah i definitely was just chatty for absolutely no reason today so sorry but also i just wanted to talk about dolls and you know what you could have clicked off the video if you didn't like it so <laughs> for those of you who are still here thank you for enjoying my ramblings this is so fun today i love doing doll hauls like there's just i like doing unboxing and reviews also obviously because like it's fun to talk about new dolls and i like the fact that they can be useful to people like i like the idea that something that i'm creating like content that I'm creating could help inform people on their purchases and that sort of thing. But also I really like doing doll hauls because it's fun to just like chat in a more casual sort of way and like a way where I don't have to make sure I point everything out or you know stuff like that. I don't know. I don't know what I'm saying. I don't know if that's making sense. It's fine. I'm loving today. I'm having a great time. Hopefully you guys did as well. Let me know which one out of the dolls we featured today was your favorite and I hope you enjoyed your time here today. I hope y'all have a lovely rest of your day or your night or whatever it might be and I will catch you in the next one. Bye guys.